So where, where did you use uh, Blue um, in your projects? So yeah, we are using AWS Glue as a ETL uh, engine for uh, processing the data. So basically, we, once my uh, source data or raw data was placed into the S3 buckets, uh, so we are using the ETL uh, Glue service to load the data and to process the data as per the business uh, requirements, like to do any sort of uh, filterings, joinings, and aggregatings and uh, many other functionalities and to get the uh, required output and also it can be used for the data cleaning and the quality to test the uh, quality to identify the quality metrics on the data so all these purposes we are using the aws uh, glue service and uh, this service mostly useful for the etl purposes and it can also comes with the metadata uh, data catalog and it has some crawlers and uh, it, it has a many other uh, use cases and mostly it is a serverless and uh, it is a managed uh, services and uh, we need to if if we need to prepare in a sort of a data lakes and data warehouse for machine learning models right so the spark based workloads so mostly we can use the glue service that is simple to use okay but um, why it was glue Uh, Glue is uh, managed services and uh, it is a serverless model so we don't need to worry about the infrastructure and the uh, cluster up and running our management and uh, infrastructure related issues and all we don't need to worry uh, that is the one biggest advantage that we get it and it is more uh, scalable like it can handle the data of any size and scales the resources dynamically and also it is cost effective like the cost it can apply like as pay as you go a pricing model so it it is a, on the cost wise also it is a good choice and uh, it can integrate with any of the sources like uh, uh, any of the third party apis apis or even uh, data jdbc connectors and it can also read the data from s3 so it can in, in, integrate well with uh, different uh, source systems and also it has like uh, data crawlers like using the crew crawlers we can scan the data sources and uh, we can info the schemas and uh, we can populate the uh, glue uh, data catalog with the metadata and it is good with even the streaming uh, use cases also so in my project uh, we have a requirement to load the data from source systems and to do some sort of a business uh, transformation so we went, uh, chose the glue uh, for the uh, simple and the managed services so we are looking for some sort of a managed services with metadata management and can support the uh, data quality and uh, schema evolutions so that's why we chose the aws uh, glue service uh, Athena, um, what, what, why did you? Uh, Amazon uh, Athena is a, uh, a serverless interactive query service. So that will actually help to uh, query the data that was uh, placed in the S3 bucket. And it do can support the multiple file formats like CSV, JSON, Auro, Parquet. So it, JSON, so it will support most of all the file format to read the uh, data and it is a serverless main advantage is it is a serverless and uh, we don't need to worry about the infrastructure again uh, here and it will uh, integrate and it can access the metadata created by the AWS glue service so with the help of the metadata we can easily identify the tables and we can easily query the tables and uh, if wanted to do any data profiling kind of a use cases uh, we can easily uh, do that using the Athena and uh, it can well with the enable uh, data lakes like in the data lakes so mostly you wanted to see the data like uh, data structures metadata and other uh, cases and ad hoc manner we can use the Athena to query it out and uh, it, it is well versed with the data exploration use cases like uh, on ad hoc basis we can explore the data for reporting or even for debugging or uh, for uh, troubleshooting purposes and uh, especially we used in my team I used like uh, to uh, to see the source data whether it has received in a proper structure or format if there are any bad data or not so to identify any uh, any bad data in the table so we have used uh, Athena and uh, 
it also works in the pay as you go model like whatever the data that it is scanned and fetched for you so we you need to you need to pay only for that one you know need to pay extra cost and it the major advantage is like it can support the standard sql support and it is a schema on read uh, support so we no need to define the schema friend we can uh, read the schema using the metadata tables and it is also supported with the row based and column based uh, formats and it can support to uh, read any of the log files even right so and it can also support the data governance features related it can uh, enable you to uh, give the role based access control so that your data would be most uh, secure okay and it is uh, easy to use s3 and also it can support the uh, query federation which is nothing but if your data was located in some other source systems let's say uh, some rds or or uh, postgres D sql databases we can also integrate that databases with the uh, uh, s3 data and we can able to query that that is nothing but federated query so athena can also support the federated query and recently athena can support even the spark based uh, notebooks like instead of writing the sql so you can create the notebooks on the fly and we can create some sort of a uh, transformation so it it will uh, do all the transformation and can produce the result uh, for us okay so how much data that you are referring here like uh, in glue and athena um, how much yeah. Uh, coming to the data volume so mostly in, we are processing the data in the incremental batch fashion so in the incremental fashion it will be uh, somewhere around like 100 gb to uh, 110 uh, gb kind of the data but uh, to query the data from the uh, athena we are using the historical data as well so if you can go consider the historical data it will be in some terabytes of the data like maybe some uh, 50 to uh, 100 terabytes of the data even we do have some fact table uh, which is around 100 tb of the uh, data size fine fine so recomfortable in writing queries Yes, I'm comfortable in writing the SQL queries and Python uh, coding and even PySpark coding because in my day-to-day -day life, like mostly uh, 30 to 40 percent of the day, I will spend on the coding side, and I do have overall good experience on the SQL and uh, uh, programming part. So I'm comfortable in writing the codes and uh, executing debugging and uh, and uh, contribute in any of the place like uh, you know optimization, cost saving, and all. I'm quite interested. Uh, as you have worked up uh, like fifty percent, and I mean uh, half of your career in SQL and uh, Snowflake, what are the main differences that you notice as a developer? Uh, yes. Uh, i have experience of using the uh, you know databases like rdbms oltp databases like mysql uh, sql server and postgres and uh, aurora uh, databases and before that uh, yeah before uh, the cloud was came into the market i am working with the postgres and sql server uh, databases and also worked with the uh, multiple uh, data warehouses tools like uh, netz teradata and uh, different uh, warehouses tools so those are basically mpp model like uh, massive parallel uh, processing kind of a model so there uh, we are going to store the data in terms of the row wise uh, but when the hadoop and the cloud came into the picture right so we are using the uh, columnar based uh, uh, storage heavily for the oltp use cases especially for analytics and uh, reporting purpose because these uh, file format offer the greater uh, advantages in terms of storing the data in the column or wise in terms of the compression in terms of the accessing the data on the schema evolution so all these features are uh, supporting heavily but uh, in uh, mpp databases like teradata and all we do not have these uh, features and also uh, coming to the uh, architectural wise like earlier uh, we used to store the data in the compute and uh, storage uh, together in a single machine but now uh, we have uh, option to decouple the storage and the processing uh, in general let's say if you can take the s3 or adls any sort of the data lake right so uh, data lake can able to store the data without the processing uh, uh, processing engine so that is a good uh, i can say and also the on the storage wise storage 
is much cheaper compared to earlier because of this decoupling the uh, compute and the uh, storage coming to the uh, sql queries right so earlier uh, we were able to uh, uh, you know some databases do not support the windows and some advanced uh, uh, functions but now most of all the databases are supporting the advanced windowing uh, analytics uh, analytical uh, functions so that is a one good thing that i can say uh, that everywhere uh, the most of the sql advanced sql windows and all right so windows functions and all we are able to uh, using that so that is a one thing uh, good i can say and also uh, these recent uh, uh, data warehouses tools like uh, snowflake even uh, uh, redshift or uh, some of the uh, you know delta lake or uh, iceberg tables right so these tables can support with the various features like data sharing and uh, time travel especially so this time travel feature helped us a lot to uh, save the data though we do not have any backup uh, kind of a mechanism uh, especially in the production databases because i use this time travel feature in my uh, experience uh, to refill the data uh, in the production data uh, that was mistakenly executed the delete command and we lost the data and uh, i really i realized we have this uh, command uh, time travel command and we use the time travel command and i was able to uh, reload the data back to the production database system so that i have uh, same much of saved so much effort and uh, hours and uh, you know uh, all those uh, things are there and these are all the things that i have identified uh, the difference uh, like all the days and now for example there is a large table in this of like right which is taking so much time to process or querying mm-hmm. uh, retrieve some data yeah okay it's a big table okay so what are the optimization techniques that you apply on on top of this table okay Uh, so first we need to understand the query uh, like what the query is actually doing so to understand the query and the snowflake we have an option to see the query profile so if you open the query profile uh, it will show you the list of the micro partitions that it has read and uh, the how uh, many partitions that it has eliminated and where it is actually taking long time so we can able to we, we can we can able to identify that one and then we need to take a call like what need to be here done so most of the cases since it is a bigger table uh, so we need to define the clustering keys so usually the clustering keys will be defined by the snowflake itself as an like automated uh, step but since for the bigger table it is a good idea to define our own uh, cluster keys depends on our uh, query patterns like based on our uh, uh, based on our frequently uh, filtered columns or joining uh, joining columns based on this we can create the uh, clustered keys so this will actually improve the uh, performance when we are scanning the data so that we can able to view it in the query uh, profile other thing is the materialized view like we we can use the materialized view for this kind of a uh, use cases uh, to avoid the uh, uh, you know to avoid the computational uh, time like materialized view can store the pre computed uh, results like if you can query the same table or a uh, view again and again it will cache you that result and it can uh, give you the pre computed result means it need not to calculate the again so uh, it will store the data in the cache and it can give you that uh, ready made information for us so that that's one how we can avoid this kind of uh, uh, long running uh, queries and uh, we need to avoid the select star in queries like we should not select all the columns instead we need to specify the required columns from the table so most of the cases in uh, uh, analytical uh, purposes we do have uh, you know we can use only the required columns so with the help of that we can tr- we can try to minimize the uh, data that it is fetching from the tables use like optimized storage format like uh, ensuring the data is stored in a cus- compressed uh, columnar format like compressed columnar format can give you the greater advantage uh, advantage when you have a duplicated data or null data in your uh, data right so that actually can can fit a uh, lot and also we try to see uh, by increasing the warehouse size like uh, most of the times we never change the warehouses but if you try to increase the warehouse to the next level of the cluster and you can see the performance is improving or not because this will actually improve the dynamic uh, concurrency so we we can check that as well using the joining strategies we need to use the optimized join strategies like uh, if if 
in a table has a smaller in size better we can go with the broadcast join and for the bigger tables we can go with the uh, partitioned uh, kind of a join so on the summary level like uh, we need to analyze using the query profile uh, to identify where it is actually taking the time and query uh, pruning data scanning prunings are happening or not and then we need to define our own clustered keys for the bigger data sets so that will actually help to improve the performance